Hello everyone, welcome back to another drawing tutorial by Studio Jillian. I'm here to teach you how to draw some forest creatures that you will be able to see in The Colors of a Dream, written by Kim St. Ange. We are going to draw all the furry creatures featured in that book. Stick around to the end of the video where you can get the link to purchase your very own copy of The Colors of a Dream and The Tree, also written by Kim St. Ange. For today's video, we're going to need a pencil, an eraser, and some kind of pen to outline our drawings. We're going to start with my little fox character. And you guys know the drill, we're going to start with a circle for the head. Now the fox that I've drawn has a little bit of a football shaped head, so we're going to add some round triangles for the cheeks. And then we're going to go ahead and draw the ears. The ears are also rounded triangles, and we're just going to put on top of the head. Then I'm just going to map out the face by drawing our little cross and right in the middle I'm going to draw an upside down triangle for his nose. Draw two little ovals for the eyes and fill in the ears. So the fox has a white part just under his chin, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw right from the nose right out to the cheeks. Now I'm going to show you how to draw his body as if he were a little character person. So we're going to make a bean shape and this consists of a few circles to get our bean shape just right. Just right. Then we trace over our circles from the neck all the way around to make our little bean slash pear shape. Now before his body gets all cramped with all these circles, I'm going to draw the white patch that he has all down his belly. So we're going to draw it starting from the chin and loop it around just like we did his body. So now we're going to map out where his arms and legs are. His legs are going to start by the bottom of his body, and we're just going to map them out with circles. So I'm thinking of making him sitting, um, so his knees will be bent and his toes will be peeking out the bottom. I drew in the toes, um, but his toes are a dark brown slash black color, um, so if you mess up on the toes it's fine because we can color it over with a dark color later anyway. For his tail, we want it to be big and fluffy, so I'm going to draw a squiggly line and then draw the bottom, but I'm going to add a circle so I know how big and fluffy I want it to be, and I'll just draw around the circle. And I'm going to map out his arms. so. I'm going to make them straight out so you guys can see what the shape is and then when you draw him again you can move the circles any way you want and then just draw around but this is the basic shape of his arms. Alright, so grab your pen. I'm just using a black ballpoint pen because you don't need anything fancy to create. So just go over the lines that you want to keep and make sure you don't go over the guidelines because we don't need to see those in the final drawing.
And there you have the little fox, as if he were sitting up. I'm going to color in these little hands real quick just to show you that uh, we're just coloring him in, so it doesn't really matter if you draw his fingers or not. If you mess up, just draw little black circles. It's all good. And I'm going to show you what he would look like as if he were standing like an uh, actual fox. So we're going to map out the body with circles again. And I'm going to draw a line through him. This will be what we call the action line, or the line of action. I forget which way that goes. Um, but anyway, this is the line that the head to the tail is going to follow, and it'll just map it out easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the outside of our body line by going over or around some of these circles and this will create the body shape. I keep forgetting to add my tail circle um, but it really helps with how big and fluffy I want the tail so I have to remember to add that. To do his muzzle or nose, you have to remember that the top of the nose is going to be a little bit longer than the bottom where his chin is because he's got a big nose and it's going to be pointing out further than his little chin. And because I drew this character like he has a football head, we got to go behind the head circle and kind of make it pointed out just a little bit because we're viewing him from his side, not the front. So the cheek won't be sticking out like it would be if he was facing us. I want you to pay attention to how we draw the ears. So the front of the ears point straight, straight line. The back of the ears are curved. Only when we see him from the side though. So see how there's more space in the back of the ear than there is the front when I draw the inside? We're not going to forget to add his nose and his little smile. Make the smile curve just in front of that head circle guide that we made. So you can see here it curves further away from the head circle. And now we got to make that little white chin of his. So we're going to draw out the line for the white part of his chin and not go all the way to the back of his head because it's only on his chin and cheeks. See how there's a little bit of space behind the white part on the back of his head? Now we're going to add his eyes. And because I don't draw his eyes with like huge colors and all this nonsense, they're just circles, it would look really funny if they were further back. So if we want him to look forward, the eyes need to be as close as possible to the front of his face. Alright, time for some legs. Here's an anatomy lesson. Fox shoulders are on top of the back, just like ours. We have our shoulders way at the back, shoulder blades, all those. So they start way up at the top, but the elbows are actually what we see and draw as the legs. So you can see here that the first circle is his elbow and the bottom one would be his wrist. So you can look at your own forearm and that's kind of how that would work. It helps me to look at reference pictures of real animals to get a better idea of where their arms, legs, tails, ears should go. I got this picture from Pinterest, which is a safer search engine than Google Images. So I'm just mapping out the back leg, which is different from the front leg. Um, the circles that I'm creating are actually the knee, the ankle for the whole leg. The hip joint is actually closer to the back of the fox. Um, here's a picture of a dog skeleton that is kind of the same as a fox, but I couldn't find the correct spelling on a fox diagram, so here's a dog. Make sure you draw the leg on the other side as well. Um, he is not three-legged, 
Uh, this box has all four, so you can see all four feet. You can go ahead and take your pen and outline your fox now. I'm going to show you one of my favorite brush pens to use. It's my Prismacolor brush pen and I'm going to use it to fill in some of these little pieces of my fox like his ears, eyes, nose, and eyebrows. Let's draw the squirrels. These squirrels have names actually. They're called Vlad and Zoe. If you order our book, The Tree, or The Colors of a Dream, you'll see why. So let's start out with our circles. We gotta map out their bodies. I'm gonna start with the head and the bottom because their bodies are jelly bean shaped. We gotta trace our line for their body around the circles. So start from one side and go under the bottom circle and back up to the top. So if you can see the head shape, it's kind of a football when they're facing forward a little bit. So that's why I'm making lines outside of the circle that look kind of like I'm shaping it to be the football shape. They have tiny ears, so draw in some little ovals right on the top of their heads. And then we're gonna go ahead and make oval eyes. They have a tiny triangle for a nose and a very small mouth. The circles that I'm adding in the eyes are just the sparkles of light that you would see, except I've made them much bigger than they would be in real life to make them extra cute. So now that I've finished playing with his head, I'm going to make a circle to map out where his tail is going to be. Just like the fox, I want his tail to be big and fluffy, so I'm going to make the circle at the top closest to his head bigger than the one closest to his body, which is going to be way smaller. So I don't know if you've ever seen a squirrel um, standing up and looking around, but their arms are kind of T-Rex arms. So I'm going to make two little circles and then connect them. One's going to be the shoulder and one's going to be the hand. This circle by his hip is going to be his knee. So we're going to make it oval shaped and on each side, then we're going to draw his foot underneath. 
I'm starting the feet to look like triangles because we're going to round them out later. And then we get to do it all again for Zoe. I'm going to go a little bit faster with this one because all the instructions are on the first squirrel. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to draw one of them sideways because their head is a little different. So we're going to start with a circle and then we make his nose a little bit longer. We're going to draw one of his big eyes because when we're looking at him from the side, we only see one of his big eyes. Don't forget to add the eye shines or the light sparkles, whichever you want to call them. We just need to add them in there. For the ears, we're going to add them right on the top of the head, really close together. Okay, time to make the jelly bean body. I don't know if I'm using circles this time doesn't look like it. I think I'm just going for it. Yep, we're just going for it. So, pear shape, jelly bean shape, legs, and tail. My special talent is being able to imagine the shapes without having to put them on the paper. And that's why I show you guys the shapes that I can see. Because not everyone can see the shapes like I can. And that's okay. That's why we practice. Make little T-Rex arms and add tiny little fingers. Once you're happy with your sketch, take your pen or marker and outline your drawing and keep the lines that you want to see in your final drawing. Another important thing to remember when you're using a pen or marker is you need to wait for the ink to dry before you take your eraser to it. Otherwise you're going to have smudges and you're going to be pretty upset when you smudge. I know I am. So make sure you take that time to wait for the ink to dry. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Alright, let's draw the rabbit family. I'm going to start with our circles. The rabbits look like jelly beans, just like the squirrels, except they're a little taller than the squirrels if you draw them together. 
squirrels are small, rabbits are kind of big, foxes are much bigger. I know I've been calling them jelly bean shapes, but the more I look at them, they kind of look more like pears, so we're gonna make a pear-shaped rabbit. I'm making these lines on top of the rabbit's head because I want to map out where my ears are going to go. So rabbit ears aren't perfectly round, they kind of have a little corner to them towards the top, so I like to make sure to remember that even though they're cartoons. Because anyone can make a long oval for a rabbit ear. So I want you to pay attention to the shape of the head. I'm going to draw arrows to show you which way your line should go. So the top of the head is a little bit more out and then once you get to the cheek you bring your line back in to the neck. Rabbits pick up their paws like squirrels do a little bit when they stand up on their two back feet. Um, but because I think it's really cute when they do the T-Rex arms, I'm gonna draw my rabbit to have T-Rex arms. Okay, we're gonna draw the knees and the feet, similar to the squirrel. We're gonna make the ovals and then draw the feet right underneath. It's very important to look at reference images when you're trying to draw something uh, because that makes the difference between whether or not it looks correct and wrong. Not wrong, but something just is a little off. So you want to make sure you know what a knee looks like before you go and draw a knee. You want to make sure you know what a hand looks like before you go and draw a hand or feet or anything. Like rabbit ears. You want to know what rabbit ears look like before you go and draw a rabbit. The eyes and nose on the rabbit are similar to the squirrel. So if you want to go back in the video and look at how to draw the eyes and the nose, you can do that. But they're basically the same. Alright, last critter. We're gonna draw the rabbit from the side view. So we're gonna do a circle and I'm just gonna go and do it and see if you guys can follow along with what you've learned. So if you need to, remember to use the circles to map out your body. Remember, just like the squirrel, the rabbits have the same eyes, 
So we can go ahead and draw the oval eye and the sideways triangle nose for the rabbit. Those aren't eyelashes on top of the eyes, by the way. They have little whiskers on their eyebrows. If you've ever looked at a rabbit and or a cat, a lot of animals actually have just whiskers on their eyebrows instead of eyebrows like we do. So remember the pear-shaped body we did on the last rabbit? Well, we're gonna do it again, except this time back of the pear is going to be a little bit more flat than the front. So we're going to give the rabbit a big round tummy. Also, the tail isn't really like a cotton ball. If you've looked at a rabbit, their tails actually kind of hide under their body. You don't really see them a lot in pictures. So we don't want to make it too big because otherwise it won't make sense. You'll notice that um, I might accidentally sketch into this little rabbit's ears over on the side, and that's because I don't like to waste paper, so I just use up all of my paper until there's no more room left. Go onto Pinterest and search up rabbits. There are lots of different colors of rabbits you can draw and practice. I say Pinterest because it's safer than Google Images. Google isn't exactly monitored like Pinterest is. Once you're happy with your sketch, go ahead and outline it with your pen or marker, or pencil crayon, whatever you have. Because remember, you don't need anything fancy to create. Hey again everyone, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. If you did, I have some more on my Studio Jillian Facebook page that you can go and draw along to as well. I would love to see how your drawings turned out today, so post them in the comments section. With your grown-ups permission, of course. Also, here are the links to The Colors of a Dream and The Tree, written by Kim St. Oge. Be sure to check out those so you can get your very own copies of each book. Thanks again for watching and keep creating.